Hey and welcome to day three. Today we're going to choose the right bees for your hive. Not all bees are created equal. We'll help you choose the best bees for your hive lo based on your location. <clears throat> Did you know there are over 20,000 known bee species in the world? They range from the world's tiniest two millimeter solitary perdita minima to kumquat sized species of carpenter bees. Here's the thing, only about 40 subspecies actually produce honey around the world. In South Africa, we have two distinct subspecies of honeybee and at least one species of stingless bee known as mocha or mopani bees. As for our honeybee species distribution in South Africa, it is split along the great escarpment. How this divide took place was nothing to do with us humans. Mother Nature got involved from the beginning and natural selection over millennia worked its magic. That and geography where the little and the great crew acted as a natural DMZ zone where it was naturally able to keep them apart from each other. Below the Great Escarpment, across the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape, to the windy city of Port Elizabeth, we have the unique Apis mellifera capensis, or also known as the Cape Honeybee. Before I share why capensis is unique, I'd like to introduce the Highfelt Bee, or more aptly known, Apis mellifera scutellata, aka the African honeybee, it's the bee I work with. It's home to the top half of South Africa, being the Northwest, Northern Cape, Free State, Gauteng, Pumalanga, Limpopo, and KwaZulu Natal provinces. Once we start moving into Mozambique and further north, the species change over into the Central African bee species. But back in South Africa, there remains a massive problem. In the early 1990s, from below the Great Escarpment, a beekeeper took a lot of bees, we're talking 200 or so colonies, across the forbidden zone that nature put in place for millennia. Use these bees to pollinate a, a farmer's crop. Prior to this, there had been two other outbreaks in the 1980s as reported by Jeff Tribe and Martin Johannesmeyer, although these outbreaks were on a small scale and easily contained at the time. The 1991 outbreak, however, involved a large number of capensis colonies, as mentioned, 200, col 200 hives, moved outside their native region and then also a large number of Scutellala colonies brought into the Capensis native region and then went back again into the Scutellata region taking a huge number of parasitic workers with them which then spread. So in doing so, and bear with me for the history lesson here, it is vital to note for the future of beekeeping in South Africa that the natural distribution barrier nature had put in place to keep our two subspecies apart did so for good reason. Cape honeybee species alone is able to have workers produce female eggs. No other species can do this. The issue is Cape honeybee workers can lay both male and female eggs without a queen. They become a pest, or a cancer even, inside a scutellot hive by taking it over and eventually seeing numbers dwindle and dying off. So what does this actually mean? Well, where we once had two distinct subspecies of honeybees, we're also now seeing some hybridization or mixing of capensis with scutellata DNA. Scutellata bees across SA have suffered tremendous losses post-1993 from the legal requirement of termination when cape bees are discovered to have infested a scutellata hive. So around 100,000 bee colonies were said to be lost in that decade alone. This practice still continues today. Capensis spotting should be reported to DAF, or now known as DALD, who are keeping track of the northerly migration of Capensis, as well as hybrid scutellata bees. So with a tough section over, and thanks for hanging in there, in summary, the Capensis bees are at home with the Fainbos regional biome, below the Great Escarpment. Whereas everyone else has the scutellata, and beekeepers contend with a growing number of hybrid colonies as well as these rogue capensis colonies which are pests anywhere above the no-go zone. Beekeepers in South Africa often actually consider cape bees more of a threat to their colonies than even the varroa mite. And that's discussed by Anderson and Truman. Because of this, researchers globally have taken notice of cape bees. Many fear that if cape bees ever spread outside of the South African area, they may be a significant problem for beekeepers worldwide. Cape bees can be managed for pollination and honey production, just like other subspecies of the honeybee, including Scutellata, within their native distribution. Furthermore, cape bees are generally more docile, unlike other African bee races like the Scutellata itself. In other continents, the USA imported European bees as honeybees were not native to the continent. 
brought to North America by European settlers as early as 1622, honeybees were coveted for their honey making ability. Go figure. South America has its own bees but also suffered biological introduction of around 50 scutellata colonies when introduced in Brazil in 1956. These were utilized for research purposes to crossbreed higher production scutellata with less docile local bees resulting in some colonies also managing to abscond and break away to become the infamous African killer bee. Europe and Asia have the vast number of different species for honey production. Many are locally suited to their respective climates and conditions, including uh, especially cold weather. Some are more placid and bred to be less aggressive than the African sisters over the last centuries. They also tend to be prone to more diseases and pests, especially those not native to Eurasia, such as the small harp beetle, which is endemic to Southern Africa. As our focus is on South African beekeeping, we are limited in our choice of honeybee distribution area. If you are near the border of an escarpment legally demarcated barrier, it would be prudent to inquire with your local and regional beekeeping association or club, or even a beekeeper, as to the purchase, but especially the movement of bees around the demarcated area. This is to avoid further contamination and spread of Capensis bees outside its natural biome. Good lot of bees don't survive below the escarpment for more than a few weeks, as a colony once capensis workers actually infest it will die off. Thanks for joining me on episode 3 and please like and subscribe to get notified of our other episodes. Upcoming episodes include getting bees, caring for bees and harvesting honey, so stay tuned.